Danny Yates. Welcome to our weekly messages. Today is called AI, the city of adultery and idolatry. And we'll take a reading from Joshua chapter 7, verse 2 through 5. Joshua chapter 7, verse 2 through 5. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Avon, east of Bethel, and said to them, Go up and spy out the land. And the men went up and spied out Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not have all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not make the whole people toil up there, for they are few. So about 3,000 men went up there from the people, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai killed about 36 of their men and chased them from the gate as far as, as Shebarim and struck them down at the desert, and the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Ai is a city that is often overlooked and misunderstood, a city often ignored or at very least discounted. It, it gets lost in the shadow of its pre, uh, of its counterpart, Jericho. But on the contrary, Ai is a city that is meant to be remembered, a city we can learn spiritual warfare from. While on the other hand, Jericho was never meant to be held onto. It was never meant to be lived in. AI is a battle that we all must fight, sometimes every single day. It is the first one after Jericho that we must win if we are to succeed in our spiritual battles. If we want to collect the spoils, that is. So let me just set the scene on what's happening. But first, let me just explain what types and antitypes and shadows are. An antitype is the person or thing represented or foreshadowed by an earlier type or symbol. The word antitype used in the New King James Version is found in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20 and 21 and it's baptism baptism is the antitype here first peter chapter 3 verse 20 who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long suffering waited in the days of noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few that is eight souls were saved through water there is also an antitype which now saves us Baptism, not the removal of filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God through the re resurrection of Jesus Christ. So there we have it in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. It shows us what, what an antitype is, and that antitype is baptism. Now, a type is a person, thing, or event that represents or symbolizes another, especially Another that is thought will appear later. So the symbol, the token is a sign. And um, again, New King James Version, Romans chapter 5, verse 15, talks about Adam as being a type of Jesus. So Romans chapter 5, verse 14 says, But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned, in the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is the type of him who was to come. So Adam is a type of Jesus. Now a shadow uh, is a mirrored image, a reflection. The word shadow, um, we're going to look at in the ESV. Um, it's found in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1, and which is the law and the new covenant. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, 
and not the very image of those things can never with those sacrifices which they offered continually year by year make those who come who who come onto it perfect so the um the law is a shadow of the good things to come it, it, it's it's the shadow of the new covenant found in Christ Jesus. Now, a copy and a shadow of the heavenly things, again, is an ESV, is the temple. So, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. Who serve that which is a copy and shadow of the heavenly things, even as Moses is warned of God when he is about to make the tabernacle for, see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern that was showed thee in the mount. So those are antitypes, types, and um, shadows. And we're going to talk a little bit about those because because um, AI is a type of spiritual battle that we have to fight every single day, or at least sometime in our in our spiritual walk. And there's a lot of foreshadowing that, that's, that's going on just below the surface. And today, I want to try to help you unpack this whole event, what's going on here, so, so that you can get a deeper look at what's happening. So something that, that goes below just the surface reading of Joshua chapter 4. So Joshua chapter 4, verse 19 says, The people came up. Out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they encamped at Gilgal on the east border of Jericho, which is actually on the west side of the river Jordan. Now, I want you to please, please understand, understand that this is the Jewish New Year. This is the first month of their religious year which means it's time for their Passover, right? So on the 10th day of the first month of the Israelites' new year, they crossed over the Jordan and entered into Gilgal. That would be the day, the 10th day, that would be the day that the Israelites are supposed to select the lamb or the goat for the Passover sacrifice, which would be slaughtered four days later, on the 14th day of that same month. So, remember that the shadow of things to come? Well, well, the 10th day of the first, first month can be thought of as the day of choosing because that's the day that the Israelites would choose a lamb or a goat that they would, would later eat for the uh, Passover they would sacrifice it at the time of, of, of the sacrifice, and then they would prepare it, and they and their families would, would have the, the Passover meal. So now, this is the day of choosing, right? So remember that, that these people who just passed over the Jordan, their forefathers were rejected because of unbelief and disbelief and, and disobedience. So now God was selecting or choosing these people, these children of, uh, uh, of, of the fathers and mothers and those who, who, who perished in the desert. They're choose, he's choosing their children to enter into his promise and give them what he had promised their forefathers. Then Paul likens the passing through of water to baptism into Moses. Look with me, if you would, at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 2. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So those who were, were baptized coming through the Red Sea were now all dead. So these new promised receivers, they had to be now baptized. The children, they, that that were born during that time, that 40 years, 
uh, of wandering in the desert, they needed now to be baptized, but they have now been chosen. Now, look with me, Joshua chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives and circumcise the sons of Israel a second time. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the sons of, of Israel at Gibbeth Harath Haria. Now, it said uh, to, to circumcise the sons of Israel a second time. So were these people getting a second circumcision? No, no. They weren't really circumcised at all. So now they had to be circumcised, which means they're now, now being um, um, ad adopted into the, um, the covenant with God because circumcision was a sign of the covenant. So now they're, they're in a covenant relationship with God. They've just been chosen. they just passed through the, the, the waters, which means they were just baptized and now they're in a covenant relationship with God. So let's just think about this though for a second, right? Being circumcised, we just think, we just read that they're circumcised. He, he circumcised them in Gilgal. But think about this a little deeper. This had to take a lot of faith on their part. Because why? Because you have to realize that they're now just crossed over the Jordan. They're no longer on the other side. They're in enemy territory. They're right down the street from Jericho, the city that they that they that is in their their um, crosshairs, so to speak. They are aiming to take Jericho out, and Jericho knows it. Now they are in their camp, and their every one of their men are circumcised. Which means that, that, that they're left vulnerable. They, 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 they're immobile right now. Um, and, and Israel knew the stories. They, 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 they knew all of the stories. What story am I talking about? I'm talking about, about Simeon and Levi. When they single-handedly, the two, them two brothers single-handedly killed a whole city while they were circumcised. They waited until they were circumcised and, and, and then when, when all the men were down and, and, and immobile, they went in there and they slaughtered every man in that city and plundered that city. That same thing could have happened to them. Do you think that that could have been on, the, on their mind, what they were thinking about? Should we really be doing this? All of our men being uh, circumcised at the same time. But they put their faith and their hope in God and God protected them. Because... Apparently, circumcision normally takes seven to ten days to heal in babies, but can take up to three weeks in older boys and in men. Some say that, that it can take two days before you can even walk properly again. Two days. So I think it took a lot of faith, great faith, to be let to, to, to let himself become so vulnerable to the enemy in enemy territory. But, but David later on, he, he, he would write um, the, the 23rd Psalm that said, um, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So we, we, we have a God that, 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 that can prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And even though we're vulnerable and, 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 um, and capable of actually fighting in enemy territory, he will save us. He will deliver us. He will protect us. That's the kind of God that we serve. So think about all the symbology and, 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 uh, that, that's going on now. Because sometimes... We, we, we don't see what's actually happening, what, what's going on below. But, but just, just watch this. Look at this a second for me. On the 14th day, they ate the Passover. Again, the Passover is a type or shadow of things to come, right? Passover being the shadow or the picture of the sacrifice of Jesus 
on the cross on Calvary. So now they're saved, they're sanctified. Now they are ready for, for the fight. They're ready for the enemy. But before you gotta pay the price, they they had to release the tithe. See, see, we can't take that which is God's. Adam, he 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 had to also release that which was God. He had to not touch the um the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then they marched around Jericho. 13 times, and the 13th time around, the walls came crashing down. The Israelites just had a huge victory over unsurmountable um, odds. They, 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 were, they were in one glee. They, 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 they were ecstatic. They, they, they were hyped up. They were high-fiving each other, and, uh, and, and they were just praising and celebrating. Now, they come to, to, to Ai. Just remember now, Jericho had walls so huge that chariots were, were patrolling on top. They had houses built inside of this wall. That's how huge and thick this wall was. And it just came crumbling down. So these men, they were, they were ready. They were gung-ho. And, and they come to, to, to Ai, a little city with few people, and these few people were terrified of them because they heard what had just happened at Jericho, and they knew that Jericho was a formidable um, um, force. They, 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 they were well guarded, the, their walls were huge, they, were, they, they had more people than, than, than Ai. So, so they, they, they were terrified of the Israelites. But, and the scripture tells us that Ai is near Beth Avon. Now the name Beth Avon means house of deception or idolatry. So Beth Avon is deception, is deceitful. And I believe the battle of Ai is a type of spiritual battle we must fight pretty much every day. Just like we said earlier. A is for idolatry. And I is for idolatry. AI. Idolatry and idolatry are always in close relation with Beth Avon. Deception. Achan was deceived into taking some of the things that belonged to God and left an open door for the enemy to enter his life after being chosen, after salvation after sanctification, after being baptized. That's why God says to bring the full tithe into the storehouse. The open door not only disrupted his life, but it disrupted the lives of his family, the lives of his community, so much so that, that when it came to Ai, the whole community failed. Not just Achan, but the whole community failed. Have you ever noticed that that the first thing that people say, it's my life, it's none of your business. I can do whatever I want. It only affects me. It's my business. But in reality, it's not just affecting them alone. It affects everyone around them. For instance, like smoking. People smoke, say, well, it's my business. I can do whatever I want. But if they end up with cancer, it's their family members who have to take them to, to the doctor's appointment. It's their family members who, who has the expense. Or, or, or so, sometimes it's even true in marriages. The family says, don't marry this, this, this person. But blinded, they go in blinded. And, and it's the family that, that um, ha has to encourage the family that, um, that, that, that sticks with it. It shares the burden of a divorce. Yeah, and so sometimes the divorce it, it's, it is a really nasty one in court. It affects us. No man is an island. We all affect each other. 
Even even our moods uh, affect others. You ever go into to a room and, and the room is, 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 is heavy because something just happened in that room. And the heaviness, you can feel it. Or you go into another room and there's joy, there's peace, and you can feel it. And, and you're just feeling encouraged. Negative people bring you down. Positive people bring you up. We are a people of community. So in life, we come to AI, which is always next to Beth Haven, deceit. And it all starts innocently. She, she walks by, throws a little glance at you. You pay her a compliment. You start a little fl flirtatious um, conversation, not necessarily meaning anything or not meaning it, it to, to go anywhere. Well, at least maybe on her part, but men, men always skews things. They, 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 they always misinterpret. So you, you got to keep a man at an arm's distance because he will interpret things and completely opposite and he will turn it sexual. He's created for procreation. The next thing you know, thoughts begin to form in your mind. Thoughts turn to imagination. Imaginations turn to action. And that's where we fall down. That's why you have to be on your guard at all times because a little sleep a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a, like a robber, and want like an armed man. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 33. Poverty, that is a state or condition of lacking what is needed below what is normal in society. It renders you powerless. Lacking the condition or state to fight the good fight and to keep the faith at AI. I'm talking about spiritual poverty. And a lot of people today is suffering from spiritual poverty. A little falling in the hands, a little uh, slumber, a little sleep, and a thief will come upon you like a robber. Poverty will come upon you. And, 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 and see, that, that's, that's the thing. We, we get so distracted with the things of the world. We, 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 we don't pray anymore like we used to. We don't, we don't have any interest in praise and worship. We don't have any interest in, in going to church to, 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 to iron sharpen and iron. We don't have any interest in listening to a good sermon. We don't have any interest in listening to, 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 to up, upbeat Christian music, gospel music that encourages the heart, that keeps your heart focused on the things of God. We have no interest in those things. And, and, and what happens? It renders us powerless. It, 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 it it makes us lack that which is needed to fight the good fight. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. That's what happens when we stop encouraging ourselves in the things of God. When we stop um, all the things that we just talked about, the worship music, the church, that, that they're talking about the things of God to each other, to, to encourage each other. So AI is always situated between Beth Avon, deception, and Bethel, the house of God. But let me be clear on this. God is not in relationship with with um, with AI or with um, Beth Avon, but he isn't too far away from the two of those to lend us a helping hand to deliver us. He is never too far away. So Beth um, Bethel is always right there, right there, and Bethel means house of God. 
it's it's like the proverbial, proverbial good angel, bad angel on the shoulder. AI is in the middle right here. Over here is Bethel. And over here is, is um, Beth Avon. So the, the good angel is on the right shoulder trying to encourage you. No, no, don't do this. That's evil. Don't do this. And the bad angel, that, that little red demon that, that, that's with, with the horns and the pitchfork that, that, we, that we see in the cartoons, he's whispering in your ear. Do it, do it. Nobody will ever find out. You'll never be caught. Do it, do it, do it. But the truth is, you'll always be caught. For he that searches the heart knows there's nothing hidden from him to whom we have to give an account. So adultery is this. Listen to this. Adultery is when one spouse cheats on another spouse or on, on the other spouse with some, someone else. Idolatry is the same thing. The scripture teaches us that we are the bride of Christ. So when we commit idolatry, we are in essence spiritually cheating on Christ or bridegroom. Think about this. Here's how it works. Adultery and idolatry are both deceptive. They will make you feel like you are in control, but you are not. It's like playing the death, playing with death itself. Like Russian roulette, if you will. I saw this video uh, of, of this monkey who, 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 who was in the trees and two tigers were below. And he would swing down, he would pull the air. And he would swing down and pull the tail of another. And, and uh, he would just tease them. Sometimes he would jump down on the ground. And when they come bounding over to him, he would jump up and jump up in the trees and escape. And, and that's, that's how we feel like. We feel like we could be that monkey. But eventually we will get caught. Eventually, we will pay the price. So we have to stop playing with idolatry and adultery. Because the, the, the two of them, they always go together. Because adultery is spiritual idolatry, and idolatry is spiritual adultery, as we saw earlier. They are interchangeable. God always likens idolatry to sexual unfaithfulness. He even gets really graphic in the book of Ezekiel. Look with me in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 32, verse 17 through 21. And the Babylonians came to her, Judah, into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their whoring lust. And after she was defiled by them, she turned from them in disgust. When she carried on her whore so openly and flaunted her nakedness, I turned in disgust from her as I had turned in disgust from her sister, Israel. Yet she increased her whoring, remembering the days of her youth when she played the whore in the land of Egypt and lusted after her lovers there, whose members were like those of donkeys, whose issue was like that of horses. And that is a graphic picture that we do not need to explain or go more in detail about. Thus you longed for your lewdness of your youth when Egyptians handled your bosom and pressed your young breasts. God was very graphic on that. He likens um, adultery to idolatry and idolatry to adultery. It's all spiritually connected. Let me just recap real, really quickly here. The Israelites had just been selected. They just passed through the waters, the Jericho River, signifying baptism. They were just circumcised, signifying a covenant relationship with God. They had just eaten the Passover uh, meal, signifying Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. They had just experienced a great victory, a great deliverance, a mighty move of God, and now they're ready. But 
They left an open door in one area of their lives. And the enemy came slithering on through. The Holy Spirit through Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 through 17 says this. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace in all circumstances, taking up the shield of faith by which you can extinguish all the flame and dark of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying at all times in the spirit with all prayers and supplication. I want you to notice that all of our, 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 our weapons, all of our, our, our armor are all on the front side. Nothing is on our rear. God does not want us, nor does he expect us to be turning tail and running. Yet, and I say yet, when it comes to AI, he says, flee, run away, get away from AI, flee. Watch with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Look also, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. See, adultery and idolatry, you are always commanded to flee, run away. Don't stand up and fight. Don't, 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 don't play the monkey with the, with the, with the um, tigers. Run away. Run away. We are to make a stand, but when, when it comes to two things, adultery and idolatry, the scripture says, flee. Don't make no stand. Flee. The spies that, that Joshua sent out turned in, returned in high spirits saying, Oh, let's not bother the whole army. We can just take a few of these guys, just some of our best fighters. We'll, we'll, we'll just go out there and we'll whip them and take, take, take their spoils. And isn't that how it is in life? A young woman passes by, shaking her thing, and all the heads turn to take a look. Oh, we we're not looking to find. We're just looking to see. There's a difference, you know. But Jesus said, even if you lust in your mind, you've committed adultery. It's the second look, the second glance that causes the problem. The whole world made fun of Vice President Mike Pence when he explained how he put boundaries around his marriage. Like not riding in a car alone with a woman. But you see, the world is Beth Haven. They try to deceive us. They try to trip us up. They try to separate us from, from, from um, Bethel so that we can get tripped up at AI. And then they point the finger and they laugh. And if we let them trip us up, we'll be tripped up. But Bethel is there to encourage us. Before, before we go into battle at Ai, let's take a look at Beth Aven. Remember what I said about shadows and types and typologies. Beth Aven is a type of deceiver that lures us into Ai. They are in relationship covenant with each other. Incidentally, Joshua and his army, coming from Jericho, had to pass by Beth Aven before they got to Ai. And they got to Ai before they reached Bethel. So, so we always pass by Beth Aven before we get to, to, um, to AI. 
And Bethaven will always deceive us. See, Bethaven is, is a border town. In other words, it's, it's right there on the edge. It's, 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 it's hanging out just on the outskirts. It's a French dweller. Not French, but French dweller. When, when we walk too close to the edge, we'll slip. We will fall. We, we get tripped up by Beth Avon. And deceit, when we fall, we will fall right into AI. Now, AI, that adulterous and idolatrous city, as we said earlier, adultery is the same as spiritual idolatry and vice versa. And it comes in many, many forms. Fornication, the biggest one. Sexual perversion, the other. Money, power, your job, your work. You can make it a god. Family, leisure time. You get, you get so, 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 so caught up in these video games and I didn't even realize how big video games are. Like some people are so hooked on video games that, 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 that they, they starve to death. Your car, your family, your house. Electronic, spiritual laziness. Sports, sports. You can't go to church. You can't worship because you got to go to a, to, 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 to a sports game, sporting event. You, 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 you can't teach your children about Jesus because you're too busy enrolling them in, in, in the sport, sporting activities. Celebrities. We know more about celebrities than we do about Jesus. TV shows. You get so caught up in these TV shows that that's all you think about. That's all you talk about at work. These TV shows. Ministry. Ministry. You get so involved in ministry that you're no longer involved with Jesus. You no longer have a relationship with Jesus because the physical church, the activities of the church and expanding your church has become uh, your relationship, your family suffers, your relationship with your wife suffers, your relationship with your children suffers, your relationship with Jesus suffers. You got to watch and, and, and uh, protect yourself. So when, when the man went up to fight AI, they were deceived into thinking they had it covered, not realizing they had a breach in their armor. So let us put on the full armor of God that so in the day of adversity, we are able to stand. We're able to fight the good fight. We're able to overcome that temptation of AI. Another point that I want to bring up is this. It's a very important point. When Joshua sent the man up to fight AI, it never once said he also sent the Ark of the Covenant. He just sent a few of his good fight men to go and fight. But what's so important about the Ark of the Covenant? Well, the Ark of the Covenant represents the person, the presence, and the promises of God. So when we go to fight AI, we need the presence of God. We need his promises. But if you don't know what his promises are, how can you rely on the promises? That's why we hide God's word away in our heart that we might not sin against them. So it pointed to the fact that as the people of Israel set out to cross the Jordan to invade and to possess the land, they must do so in their own strength. Or when they went, went to fight AI, they went to fight in their own strength. But, but, but in reality, we fight in the strength of God. That's why when they were actually crossing the Jordan, the Ark of the Covenant went first. When they went to fight, they said, who should go first? And God said, Judah, which means praise. So, 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 so praise must go ahead. 
praise, prayer, worship must go ahead of um of us when we go into spiritual battle. We cannot go into spiritual battle without putting on our armor, without prayer, without worship, without praise. So what are the um the battle tactics then to to defeat AI. What are the battle tactics? What did we learn? Well, let's let's go back. Let's look. What was the battle tactics that God instructed Joshua to do in order to defeat AI? This is what it says. It says that Joshua laid an ambush between AI and Bethel. First of all, he got Bethel involved. So the men laid a, 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 um, an ambush between Bethel and AI, which signifies that God must always be involved in our spiritual fights and in our spiritual tactics. Then the army went up to the gate, and when the men came up, they turned around and they fled. They ran away. What did, 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 did God say to do? Flee idolatry and flee fornication. They ran away. And then the men who, who, who were um, in, in the um, ambush, they came out and they went in the city and burnt it. That's how we defeat AI. We run away. We run away. And we run to Bethel. And God then will destroy AI. So once the way is cleared by fleeing, then God's ambush swoops in, goes in the city, burns it, and destroys it. In our spiritual battle, Judah must go first. Like we said earlier, Judah means praise. Praise always goes before a victory. We must put on the full armor with praise, with worship. Put on some, 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 some worship music and enter into a time of worship that the air is charged, that, 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 that the presence of God may fill the praises of his people. Flee AI and God then will deliver you from its grips. But stay away from Beth Aven and go keep on the, on the side of Bethel. So if you're struggling in the battle of AI, before we, we, we go, I want to pray for you. Or if you've never known who Jesus is, you've never known him as Lord and Savior, all you have to do is say, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. And if you mean it, he will forgive you. But first, let me just pray. Father, I pray for each, each person, man and woman, who are struggling with the battle of AI. I pray, Lord God, that, that you give each one strength to flee. Each one strength to run away. And then, Lord, that you would swoop in. And that you would raise up a standard for them. And that you would rush into AI city. And that you would destroy it. That you would burn it to the ground. And Lord God, that, that, that you would give them the victory over AI. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So I want to say thank you for, for watching. Thank you for, for, for joining us today um, for, for this message. My name is Kenny. Be blessed and stay blessed.